here we are at Portland Bill today with lighthouse in the in the background but the sun was very much in our faces so we've had to move we had to relocate we've had privacy. to we've had to relocate the people staring we've had to relocate but we just thought we'd come out of the house and have some different scenery if you can see the sea from here good morning everyone welcome to our second sunday in lent for our pause for thought and we are continuing this week with the theme of what did jesus do and one thing that jesus did was to call his disciples to follow him During these weeks in the lead up to Lent, we are given an opportunity to reflect, we are given a chance to re-evaluate and maybe for some to start a new journey with God. Today we see Jesus sharing something incredibly important with his disciples, something incredibly challenging. But I wonder at the time if they really understood Jesus was saying what he was teaching them. Morning everyone. This morning's reading is Mark 8 verses 31 through to 38. Jesus predicts his death. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law and that he must be killed, and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in the mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple, must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your faithfulness. We pray that your word will speak to each one of us today and that we will be refreshed and renewed in your love. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, that must have been quite tough for those listening as Jesus talked to them about his suffering, about his death and about his resurrection. Of course, they didn't fully understand what this meant. But Peter reacts straight away to Jesus and immediately starts to tackle him because he's saying these things. He doesn't want his friend to suffer. Peter doesn't want these things to happen to Jesus. And of course, we know that Jesus tells Peter to stop. Peter doesn't fully understand what Jesus meant when he said these things. And then, of course, Jesus said those famous words, get behind me, Satan. Jesus put Satan back in his place where he belongs, behind him. Now, Peter was thinking from a human perspective, not a divine perspective. And of course, it's through divine perspective that we can see the presence of God in our situation. Sometimes we can see the, the bigger picture through God's eyes. 
but at the moment Peter is thinking about his friend and his friend's suffering and of course he doesn't want that to happen. He's thinking as we would from a human perspective. Going back to what did Jesus do? He called people to follow him. And this is where it gets really difficult. This is where it gets really hard to grasp for the listeners then and for the listeners today. He said, if you want to follow me, you have to deny yourself. But what does this mean? Dan's going to help us a bit this morning by demonstrating to us, by unwrapping a sweet, one way that this will help relate this to us, the fact of to deny yourself. So Daniel's going to demonstrate that to us today. So Dan, let me know when you're ready. All right. It means to look past the surface of who we are, to chip away, removing outer layers until we find who God wants us to be, like peeling off an outer us to find the real us. So Dan, just tell me when you're ready. All right. So a bit like a sweet wrapper, getting rid of the things that hold us back from God. Things that may be superficial, shallow, things that are more about us than about God. Right. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and ready, Dan? Yeah. We will uncover who God wants us to be. So go on then, Dan. There's a bird. <laughs> so Dan's going to demonstrate to us. So you've got a sweet. Right. So Dan's going to peel off the outer shell of the sweet. And what happens is you open, when you take the wrapper off, you're left with something nice and sweet inside. And that, that is who God wants us to be. He doesn't want us to be a Maltese chocolate, necessarily. But to, he wants us to take off the outside, our outer shell. And he wants us to get back to who God created us to be. Dan's going to demonstrate again <laughs> by the looks of it, just in case you didn't get it the first time. Sometime there are more layers to chip away at before you get to the real sweet. So this one's got a wrapper, which has gone. <laughs> Some chocolate and marshmallow in it. That's the milky way. So sometimes there's a couple of layers. And we will uncover who God wants us to be. I think we've finished <laughs> demonstrating now, but if you want to carry on eating, carry on. We can move over now. <laughs> Jesus also says, you mm -hmm. must take up your cross. Maybe we have to let go of our comfortable life and confront the modern day equivalent of the scribes and the chief priests, the people who keep the goodness and grace of God hidden away. We need to face challenges that are in the world today, things that try and take us away from the teachings of Jesus. And even though it can be costly and difficult, Jesus said we need to lose our life in order to find it, to get back to a God who created us and who loved us, we need to lose our outer shell and get back to who God wants us to be. We need to get rid of those wrappers in our life. And Dan, you need to get rid of your wrappers as well. But maybe these are material things. It's time at home replacing time with God. Maybe you're more influenced by the things around you than you are the things of God. So the first thing to be thinking about, a few things, is that and these are good conversations starting. You can have conversations with people about this. Jesus said to Peter that he should have had his mind on divine things. What does this mean to you and your life situation? What do you think the divine things are instead of the human things? Challenge yourself this week and during Lent to think about what this means to you. Secondly, what do you make of that idea of denying yourself? The idea of removing the top layer of you and revealing who God created you to be. How do you feel about that? And lastly, God called us to follow him. What does this mean for you to take up your cross and follow him? What are you going to have to get rid of or lose in your life in order to find this? Do you find this a challenge? If you do, then good. 
it's good to be challenged, to be reminded that it should be more about God and less about ourselves. And if you don't find this challenging, that poses a slight problem in itself because there's always something that we can do to get closer to God. There's always something that we can change in our lives. So maybe this should be a challenge for you all. So that's something to think about. And of course, if you want to talk more about this, then contact us at eastern at dswgood.church. Please get in touch with the team and we will be happy to chat with you anytime. Thank you for watching. God bless. I finished the chocolates.